Like most big updates before it, iOS 14 feels like a bit of a grab bag. There's a new Translate app, which seems to work pretty well, some new routing options in Apple Maps that cater to cyclists and electric car owners, improved privacy controls in Safari, and quite a bit more. In living with iOS 14 for about a week though, I've started to regard it as the just enough update. And no, for the record, I'm not implying that Apple should have done more this year. By just enough, I mean there seems to be a newfound focus on giving you just enough of what you need from your phone when you need it. I think widgets are a good place to start. If you've ever used an Android phone, you know exactly what these are. And if you've never seen one, welcome to Engadget. Uh, widget is a little secondary view of an app that you already have installed. And it's meant to give you a quick dose of information without forcing you to actually open up the app. Now, widgets aren't new to iOS by any stretch, but what is new this year is that you can pull them out of your today view and plop them anywhere you want on your home screen. Right now, the only new widgets available are tied to Apple's own apps like maps, news, activity, screen time, and more. Thankfully, they have a few things going for them. They're all pretty good looking in this sort of minimal Apple way, and most of them change their appearance even if you switch into dark mode. Even better, these widgets come in different sizes, so you can customize just how much information goes onto your home screen. Even now, there's plenty of room to experiment, but my favorite widgets have been the simplest. I have a small one tucked in a corner telling me just how hot and humid Brooklyn is right now. Next to it is a cluster of tiny icons letting me know just how much of a charge my iPhone and Apple Watch have. And beneath both of those is an activity widget that confirms that I am nowhere close to closing my rings for the day. By giving these widgets different size options and finally sticking them on the home screen, Apple just made iOS a whole lot more useful at a glance. If this were any other year, sticking more stuff onto the home screen could feel problematic. I guarantee we all know at least one person who was taking just a little too long thumbing through page after page of apps to find exactly what they're looking for. To help clean things up a little bit, Apple introduced the app library. Long story short, it's a sort of overflow area for all of your installed apps that live just beyond your last home screen. These apps are roughly sorted by their app store categories, and I say roughly because iOS ignores some of those existing categories and creates some of its own, which can make finding exactly what you're looking for a little dicey. For example, I wouldn't expect to see my banking apps in a folder labeled productivity, but sure, I mean, you can see some kind of sense in that. And the lifestyle folder, meanwhile, is just a weird catch-all. Some of my smart home apps live there, along with Amazon, Uber, NJ Transit, and the New York Times cooking app. And sure, they're all sort of lifestyle-y, but logically, I would never have a reason to lump all of those apps in the same folder, but that's just how it goes here. You cannot customize the way they're laid out at all. Thankfully, there's a big search bar that makes it pretty easy to find the app that you need. And once you jump into that search view, there is an alphabetical list of all of your apps. I should also point out that Apple paid close attention to the way apps are displayed in the library. Check out these category icons. The first three are apps iOS thinks you'll want to use based on past behavior, and Apple really wouldn't elaborate more than that. But the fourth space, with all those small icons, is what brings you into the full category list. That's certainly one way of doing it, but it's still a lot faster to just search for the app directly. Because of all of that, the app library still has kind of a work in progress vibe, but just by being here, it gives you more control over what actually lives on your home screen. You could, if you wanted, move individual apps or folders of apps into the library to free up space for widgets or just the apps you use most frequently. You should probably do this, but think long and hard about moving folders to the library because that just deletes the folder. The apps were already in the library anyway. If you would ever want that folder back just the way that it was, you're going to have to recreate it from scratch. The fastest and least destructive way to clean up your home screen is by disabling entire pages at a time, which I know kind of sounds like the nuclear option, but it does offer one huge advantage. You can quickly revive a page as it was, including those folders, in just the right place. And once you've got your apps laid up just the way you like them, you can help preserve that order by telling iOS to display new apps solely in the library. These are two of the most dramatic changes Apple has ever made to iOS's look and feel, and both of them are really well suited to giving you quick access to the apps and information you need right then and there. Of course, whether you care is an entirely different story because to be clear, you do not have to use either of these features. 
While these might be some of the most impactful changes, these aren't the only ones Apple made to chase this sort of just enough philosophy. Just look at how iOS 14 handles Siri requests. A dark splash screen used to take over your entire phone, just pulling you out of whatever you were doing, but now Siri's orb just sort of pops up at the bottom of the screen, and any answers it has for you appear at the top. That way, you get all of the needed context without getting pulled away from whatever you were doing. iOS 14 also brings picture-in-picture -picture to the iPhone, which means, yes, among other things, you can goof off on Netflix while firing off work emails. But what's arguably more useful is that you can put a FaceTime call in a tiny picture-in-picture -picture window, which makes multitasking a whole lot easier. These kind of feel like neat little visual metaphors for getting just enough functionality from key iOS features, but there's still more than that. You can pin threads to the top of messages now to quickly dart into conversations you know that you have to stay on top of, and iOS search has gotten a lot better. Requests that normally would have required you to fire up a browser or dig through any number of places can largely be handled from one place. If there's one standout example of this just enough philosophy though, it's app clips. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to try them because no one has built them yet, but I have a sneaking suspicion that these are going to be a huge deal, so we should just talk about them right now. In a nutshell, these are super small snippets of existing apps that replicate some of their key features when immediacy is the big deal. Let's say you've wandered into a Jersey Mike's for lunch, which as a South Jersey native, I can say is perfectly acceptable. It's no primo hoagies, but it's fine. Anyway, instead of waiting in a line in an enclosed space with other people, you could scan a QR code or tap an NFC tag, load an app clip, order, and wait outside. Or if you've gone on a road trip, I hate you and I'm jealous, but you could use an app clip to top up a parking meter before you wander. If you really like Jersey Mike's, or if you know you're going to use these meters a lot, you can download the app, but if you don't, app clips are built to give you just enough of the app to complete the task and let you get on with your day, or I guess I should say, your next few days. After you use them for the first time, those app clips will continue to live on your iOS device for several days in case you need them again. After that, iOS deletes the clip and all associated data, especially the secure stuff, at which point you'll just have to reinstall the app and start from scratch. App clips can also offer different mechanics and experiences the more that you use them. In the case of that parking meter, that could mean that you'd see an option to digitally refill it rather than force you to walk back to the meter and start a new session from scratch. In other words, app clips aren't just static, disposable versions of apps. They have the potential to be flexible, lightweight companions that get us rethinking what we want out of our software on our phones in the first place. Maybe the kind of just enough experience that app clips can offer is actually more than enough. But we'll all just have to wait and see. This is, after all, the first developer beta build of many before iOS 14 officially launches in September, and we have a public beta version coming in July. Some of the finer points we have just discussed could change between now and then. So in the meantime, we'll keep testing and keep you posted on how things shape up. Thank you for watching our quick first look at the ins and outs of iOS 14. There is so much going on here that we didn't think we could squeeze everything into one video and have it feel valuable and correct. So we'll probably spread out our coverage. If you have any feedback about iOS 14 or the video or just your life, we'd love to hear from you. Leave your feedback in the comments below or email me at v We'll see you again soon.